welcome and thank you very much for tuning in for a Christian Painters Live free estimate. Not just a, but the one and only. This is my very first live Christian Painters free estimate. And I want to say welcome to the future, everyone. And while at the same time, I'm going to say welcome to my guest. He's in the studio and he's got his name there as Eddie. And that's what I was waiting for. Hello, Eddie. Hello, everyone. And speaking of the future, I don't know if y'all know it or not, but today would have been the day that uh, Jetsons was born. The Jetsons cartoon series? Yeah, the, the, the father. This would have been the day that he, his birthday today. Okay. I'm sure How somebody will fact check that, but uh, I'm pretty close. That that's great, man. Love some Jetsons growing up. We're definitely showing our age. I'm 57, Eddie. Uh, me too. I, I just hey, we I, got we I, got I the boss with us. Last time I last time I checked, I was 62. Yeah, I was only checking the other day because it was my birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday! Thank you, sir. I I ordinarily kind of quit keeping up years ago, but from time to time, I am reminded. Yeah, I just try to stay moving. And keep from getting stiff yeah that's that's the key you know there's no question you got to keep it moving well i'd like to say real quick uh just to anyone who's watching or happens to watch in the future that this is a um uh, an estimate what we're going to do here is i'm going to give an estimate to eddie and he's got his boss lady there it sounds like in the background oh yeah and she's here Yes, sir. Thank you very much for both of you coming along because this is very important to me personally. And I think it's important to uh, pretty much the world. I have over 3000 YouTube subscribers on this channel. There are definitely people who watch it and comment and communicate with me. So someone will be watching this video. And uh, <laughs> what's important to note up front more than anything, I'm going to get right into this free estimate after this is that I'm giving Eddie a free estimate. And this is the future. Um, not only is it save me time and gas and wear and tear on my vehicle, um, Eddie's over in Mesquite. I'm in South Arlington, Mansfield, basically. And uh, this is the future. Um, whatever career or profession that you're already in, you're already using a video conference in place of transporting transportation quite often already. It doesn't matter what profession that you're in, efficiency is always the name of the game. And so that's what we're talking about here is efficiency. And it's not just for me, it's for Eddie. And it's going to be for the whole world. Um, you, you will probably be hiring painters, say, 10 years from now, pretty much through Home Depot or Lowe's or straight through Sherwin Williams. And it'll be something like this, where if you have to have uh, someone talk to you in person, it'll be a video conference. And they'll just say, well, turn your phone around and show me what you're talking about. Yeah, well, this would be a good place for me to step in and say, I'm not particularly tech savvy, but this was uh, easy for me to do. I mean, Rick, you just sent the link and uh, registration was no problem, super easy. So, I, I, so far, I like it. Well, it's even easier. Thank you very much for saying that because that is key here. Um, but it's even easier. You don't actually have to register, I found out. I was interviewing Dan McNew. He's a, a really cool guy. He could be watching now, but he has a YouTube channel called Just The Facts Man. And he's a local a Grand Prairie, Dallas-Fort Worth guy. He's your age. He's older than me. And uh, like he's got a video, he, he's, a, he's a, a tech guy and a space nut. And he has a video on his channel, Just the Facts Man, of the Columbia. When the Columbia hap oh, yeah. uh, explosion happened above East Texas, mm -hmm. he happened to be filming it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's on his channel. And he also has a JFK documentary, but most of his stuff is music related. And uh, so I want to say hi to Dan because I know he's going to be watching eventually. And uh, I'm inspired by all of that. But uh, what was I saying? Just that I was I was online with him yesterday. There he is. There he is. We got just the facts man in the house. Yeah. Hello. Can you see that, Eddie? Uh, I, I've got a little icon down there. I guess I, I see that. Yes, I do. 
Yeah, the, it's hey, it's hard for me to read too. The only way I can read it is that I can actually see the comments underneath the screen on my phone. So, oh, it well, says hey, I even see my doctor on video. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Yeah. I knew. See, you're a very practical person. You're uh, a perfect candidate for my very first. And as far as I know, Eddie, this could be the very first online house painting estimate uh, through StreamYard ever. I mean, oh, I, wow. I looked around a little bit. I stayed pretty busy yesterday, but I, I haven't found one. So this could be the very first. Oh, this will be good. Great. And I am certain that this is the future. I would like to say it'd be the future where you're contacting your local painter and people that you know in the neighborhood to hire them this way. But I don't think it's going to be quite like that. It's going to be more like you're going to be talking to people at Sherwin Williams this way. And so they'll be making ad sense money. Uh, let me throw that out there. I do make just a little bit of advertising money off of my Christian painters, YouTube channel. And so I, uh, you know, just being upfront and transparent, that's certainly part of what this is. This is me turning, uh, uh what could be lemons into what is lemonade for me. And I expect to be lemonade for you because Eddie, I'm convinced that I can save you money, time and headache just in this video here. If I stayed focused, I could do it in about 10 minutes, but All right. uh, one, I'm going to be respectful of your time. I'm not expecting this to take an hour, but I'm sure. willing to any questions you have. I want you to feel free. Uh, stop me, interrupt me interject be as part of this conversation as much as you uh, you know kind of need to be based on what questions you have as you're showing me your house okay <laughs> okay so uh there it is congratulations everyone this may be the world's very first house painting estimate live on Streamyard. um Eddie needs his exterior painted. It's a, when was your home built, Eddie? And and don't give uh, us too much detail because like, I don't even know if you want to give the city. I don't think I've mentioned your city yet. Uh, you never right. know. I, I just want to be respectful. I would never ask yeah. anyone live on here to give us their actual address or too much detail. Right. Well, with regards to when it was built, it was built in 1964. Yeah. And, uh, it's just a... a frame brick house and uh it's pretty simple i would say uh i think it it's is. about so, almost 1700 square foot uh, i've done some remodeling on the inside but uh you sure couldn't tell it by looking at the outside uh if there ever was a house that uh, qualified for a, a painting upgrade this would be it uh, well and that's what makes you a, an excellent uh free estimate live on video uh, also, because your house okay. is, you know, it's, it's a business. So I'm going to speak to you from the business aspect, from a personal sure. aspect. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, my number one concern here is not necessarily getting your business. My number one concern is you getting uh, the best job uh, for the money and today saving you, making sure that you're prepared, whether you hire me or someone else, um, to uh, know what to look for, uh, how much it would cost, why it would cost, and even help you get into colors. And from there, I'll even give you advice on how to actually find a local house painter. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, your house is a great candidate because um, there's a lot of people that in desperate times and have an electric bill to pay and, you know, need to get uh, maybe their wife off their back. Uh, it's a pretty extreme example, but it's a good one. You know, I mean, times are tough and we've got to pay bills. And so that is the right. typical type of a house. And, and it's, there are many, that's part of the thing with this business, um, where someone could come in and, uh, just, you know, barely wash it, um, you know, clean up a couple of the rough areas, uh, put, you know, a coat of paint on it and it's going to look great for a couple of years, you know, maybe a year or two, but within a few years, you're going to have all of those worn areas are going to show back up and that painter is going to be long gone. So yes. it's important that you hire someone who's going to a power wash the house clean. It's obviously covered with, you know, all those years of, 
uh, you know, dirt. But what it is is every day you look outside and you have mist and dew on your grass, even when it's 100 degrees outside. It's still there's moisture in the morning. So that moisture is also on your home, not to the same extent, but you have moisture on your house every day and the wind blowing and dirt's in the air and things like that. So, and, and sap from your trees. And then you get into bugs and spider webs and bug guts and, you know, all of that stuff. It just all needs to come off. So a house like that needs to be thoroughly power washed. That's number one. Yeah. All of those rough areas need to be scraped clean. Uh, that doesn't mean, uh, just, you know, hit it with a, with a putty knife, you know, sometimes you actually have to sand some of those areas, but the main thing is, is that you have to put your hand on it. That's what you'll see me doing is I've always got my, I've got a splinter right here in this finger from a job I was doing Monday. I have a bad habit of putting my hands in the wrong places, but, uh, I, you know, it, it, it couples with the same that I'm putting my hand in the right places because I literally feel of all those rough surfaces and by that determine how much work needs to go into pre preparing them. But long and short is, is all of those rough areas that are on your home, they just have to have attention. And as long as they have the proper attention, which is a combination of cleaning, scraping, sanding, uh, maybe cleaning again, but then primer, proper primers, proper caulking, and then two coats of paint. If you have any rough areas on your house, that's one of the obvious ways you know that area can benefit by two coats of paint. So uh, there's just a quick run through of what um, you should expect. And, uh, you know, um, th there's a lot more information there. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. And if you don't, I'd still like to give you even more info. But in the sense well, of you're, moving I mean, along, go ahead. You, you're speaking my language. I mean, you you got to be up next to the work to understand what it needs. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, it is a trade. It's a profession, yeah. you know. Well, and I've been doing it all my life. And there's a reason why I've done it. You know, it's something that I, you know, I enjoy. I enjoy painting. Uh, I, I actually enjoy cleaning in the sense of, um, you know, it gives me a chance to kind of turn my mind off or uh, it gives me a chance to think better when I clean. And so when I'm cleaning, I'm thinking in advance of what I'm going to be doing on the job, the materials I'm using, you know, and things like that. So the right. whole process for me is just one that I can enjoy. And let's say by comparison, what I'm saying is when I was a kid, one of my first jobs as a young adult, when I was desperate and needed work, was I took on a job at Dosca Seal Plastics. And so respect to all of our factory workers out there, major respect, because um, I have a lot of friends that have worked factory all their life. You know, I just can't do assembly lines. I just, it's not in my nature. I cannot do assembly lines. But you know, put me on a house where I can clean, prep, paint, which is, you know, one of my kind of artistic values, and then see an accomplishment, you know, over a two or three day period where I've changed something that's going to, you know, be an actual valuable upgrade for 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, that's enjoyable. That's nice to step back and look at a real accomplishment. Yeah. That's, uh, that's very well put. Yeah, when your mind is busy, you know, doing the task at hand, it uh, it is kind of freeing. <laughs> you don't know, you're not thinking about other things. Hey, you know, it's just the way that it is when you're working. You know, I'm a musician and uh, I have other things that I like to do. I, I spend a lot of time with my grandson. So I have other things that I like to do. But, you know, when I work, that's what I do. Well, hey, um. Do you have any other questions, Eddie, before we go ahead and take a look at the front of your house? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I believe that I'm I'm ready to go. We're, uh, okay. Again. Uh, sitting here in the front yard, uh, just whenever you're ready. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, reiterate that be sure to ask me any questions. And the boss lady, ask me questions. It, it will okay. help me if you ask me questions. Okay, Otherwise, sure. I know so much information that I can spit out about an hour's worth of information here. Oh, I'm and I'm not sure that that's what we're wanting to do. 
Okay. All, All right. right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the house first. We have sunlight. It's about eleven fifteen right now. Eleven twenty-two, and now, uh, his front of his home faces east. So that's why we're doing this at eleven in the morning to get the best lighting on the front of the house. Is there a way to turn the camera around, or do I need to just show it in my over my back? Or uh, you can. You should be able to hit the just like a selfie type of a button there and turn it around that way. Okay, but I'm okay with you turning your camera around. You know, if that's easier. Let me see if I can do that. You know what I'm talking about? That little selfie button. It look there. You go. Now that one just turns you off. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Cam, I've got a cam button too, and it, all it does is turn me off. And then you've got a mute mic. Yeah, I can look at settings. You want me to look at settings? Camera. Front camera. Back camera. There you go. There you go. How do you like me now? Where Where did you find? I I loving you right now. I was already <laughs> loving you, but I loving you more. It, it's under settings. It's real easy to do. I wonder if it'll do sight sideways oh how about that Let yeah get, uh, get a kind of a full view of the thing i do get a full view of it now and that helps me a lot because i'm not actually on my tv what i was thinking was was that if i needed to i can take my uh phone into my living room and right. watch this on my television and so until I get a monitor, uh, I think next time I'm definitely going to set up my studio that way so that I can see this on my TV and it'll be very large. Yeah, but here, I already here. looked at your house on Street View. And so I got a. And here's the other thing, Eddie, as I have painted thousands of homes that look very much like yours. So I'm familiar with these homes. We're good. OK, I, I guess what. Uh maybe you'd like to get a close-up and we just kind of start and, and walk around and look at the different defects yeah which many well let's talk about it what we have here uh, audience is a pink brick home and this is very important this is where we start because when we're talking about exterior painting uh, we're talking about two things we're talking about all the work that goes in all that prep work that you always hear about that's so important yeah we talk about that we talk about paint and the proper paint application and the proper paint products, but we're also thinking about colors. I mean, it just goes hand in hand. So when, you, when you're thinking colors on an exterior, it's the other surface that you're uh, making those colors go with. So in this case, it's a salmon pink brick. And this is a challenging brick color. I mean, it's the most challenging yes. really, Eddie. I believe that. Yeah, I, I did a, a, a color search. I took a picture close up of the brick and did a color search. And the closest thing I could come up to it was like a macaroni and cheese color, which yeah. is exactly right either. You know what most people do is just paint it an off white and go with it. Just kind of deal with it, you know. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, uh, on that note, talk to you about colors. Now's just as good a time as any, and, and we'll get into colors more in a minute, but just a brief uh, on the idea of one color or two colors or what we call two-tone. You can see now that there's like a peach on the trim and the siding is um, like an off-white, almost tan type of a color. Yeah, that was a choice that I made some years ago and have since regretted. I'm glad that I did not finish that. Uh, well, thank you for saying that. I mean, do you see that it's country? That's basically how you're going to make that home feel like, you know, a little more of a country cottage. And yeah. you could get away with that if you had a different brick. Your challenge is, is that you have that pink brick. And if you're not a little old lady that just enjoys a pink little country cottage, you know... <laughs> You're going to have to get creative and you've come to the right place. I've been getting creative with pink brick for a long time. I sent yeah. you a couple of colors yesterday and uh, one is they're both gray colors. Uh, primarily, they're not beiges. They're not tans. Uh, one of them is a, 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 a gray that has a mauve 
tone to it. And it's very important uh, that when I when you hear me say mob, that you hear me say uh, tone. Uh, right. The idea is you don't want the gray to come off as looking uh, purplish or mauve at all. But if you like, for example, your other option, in my opinion, is to use like a gray, I mean, a green gray. And I think that would look nice, but you're still going to see more of that green in a green gray with the pink uh -huh. brick. Then you would see the uh, mauvey hue that would be at a mauvey gray. Yeah. Okay. Here, here, here. This, this has been out of the sun, but even at that, it, uh, it's got, it's terrible over here. I mean, there's a lot of uh, paint peeling, and obviously need the caulk removed. Uh, there's a, you know, and you can see it on the trim up above. Uh, but this is this is indicative of not the whole thing, but a lot of it. Well, uh, we can see it pretty good. Um, go ahead and show me up close some of what you say looks really bad because uh, it looks typical to me for a home that needs to be repainted. Do you have any wood that's rotted through? What is that? I don't think so on this side. Like I say, this area has been protected. It's This is uh, the north side. and. There's a lot of, we got to luckily have a lot of trees here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's any damage here. Now, there may be some on the front, which I should have highlighted when I was there. No, we'll go back to it. We're talking okay. through this. We're taking okay. our time. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep it, keep it moving. Keep it, you know. Keep well, it uh, stop down on that for just a minute. That basically okay. is peeling paint. Uh -huh. And so anywhere you see something like that on the house, as long as it's not rotted through, that's the number one thing. Yeah. Um, you Least know, that just has to be removed. So you have to either, uh, you're going to power wash it first, but primarily you're going to use, um, uh, like a putty knife and a cotton rag with my hand. What right. type of siding is that, Eddie? Is that a wood siding or is that a, it, it is wood. Like a T111 wood. I'm not familiar with T111. It, it looks uh, like actual wood. It's actual yeah. wood. Yeah. It's an actual wood. Kind of like, a. uh, I would say it's similar to like a decking plank. How bowed is it in those areas where like that paint is peeling right there? Is it noticeably uh, bowed or sunken in? I don't see any bowing. Uh, all I see is just the deteriorated paint. Yeah. So, I mean, that's typical. You should never feel bad about that. Trust me. Uh, do you have any rotted wood on the house anywhere? I, I am sure that there's some... Uh, you might see a little bit here. There's a little short piece there. Uh, I'm not sure how bad that is. Can you get a it. little closer? What is that piece of wood? Because what we're looking at, folks, right there is a eave. And an eave yeah. consists of a fascia. That's the piece of wood that faces out towards the road or faces out. Underneath yes. that is the soffit. And that looks like the soffit area up underneath the eave. Yes. Uh, now, this, uh, I imagine that this gutter will, will go. Uh, I'll worry about that at a later date, but that will have to come off so that we can look at that wood and actually see if it uh, needs replacing because, you know, I'm not going to not do that. Yeah, well, you pretty much have to. I mean, if you're going to paint the house correctly, uh, that has to be addressed. How large is that gutter, Eddie? Oh, it's... Uh, it's at least probably 40 feet long. So it goes down the side of the house and curves around the back? It does not curve around the back. But it goes down the side of the house 40 yeah. feet, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that, that's too much for me. Like, I don't mind removing smaller uh, pieces of gutter, but I don't claim to be, you know, I'm a professional painter, and I know everything that there is to know about painting, and I think that any time you ask a painter to, uh, to cook you a pizza, you know, you need to be concerned. You know, if you want a pizza, go to Pizza Hut. If you want uh, chicken, go to Chick-fil-A. Uh, don't yeah. go to the pizza place to get chicken. Yeah, well, as a homeowner, I can easily resolve that for you. I'll pull that down and get it out of your way. Uh, that's the best thing to do, uh, no matter what, you know. And uh, again, it's not that I couldn't put the gutter back up. It's that I'm not as efficient at it because it's not what I do all day, every day. And so neither is any painter because no painter removes and replaces gutters, you know, every week. So yeah, it's not I what think we do. That would be an unrealistic expectation. 
Uh, well, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised oh. what people uh, expect, Eddie. Yeah, well, I guess so. But that is one of the reasons why I went ahead and asked you to do this. Not only was I pretty much going to ask anyone, but I knew after talking to you yesterday that you were a, 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 a nice gentleman. So thank you very much again. Oh, thank you for that. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and look at the rotted wood areas. What what other area? That spot that you just showed me, I have to tell you, I, I couldn't really see it. It really makes me want to go pull this up on my television where I can see it better. I'm almost going to have to. Was there any wood that was rotted over there by that gutter area? Uh, the, right, the little short piece that juts out from the house, it looked like it had some splitting and that it might be rotted. Uh, but while I'm here, this is yeah. this is the uh, west side of the house where you can see the, the and the other <laughs> end of that rain gutter. Yeah, here's the other end of the rain gutter here. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. all of that off. Now this wood looks good here, uh, surprisingly, uh, but the paint, you know, is is tortured. It's it's in desperate need of some attention here. Uh, good, good. I mean, yeah, but for the record, that's what you expect. Most people yeah. don't hire a painter to paint their homes. And I, I like to emphasize this because it might be a misnomer that people think otherwise. But most people, you know, even the nicest, uh, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar homes, they're not hiring a painter until they have a piece of rotted wood or two. Right. Until it's too late. Uh, well, it, here's how it works. You know, in the real world, it's Honey, that, that wood's rotted out over there on the patio, and, and we're going to have company this, you know, next month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it turns into a honeydew, and you start looking and going, well, I guess the whole house needs to be painted, honey. Now, now this on um, the back here, this is a, comparatively speaking, this is a relatively new gutter work that's been put up. Okay. And I can see the wood underneath there. And I have obviously tended to that. I believe it's primed. Uh, it, it looks good. I'm not sure if I've replaced it or not, uh, but we would not be removing or, or painting underneath these gutters. And this, this area right here is a- Well, you could, can I interject? You could paint under them. Don't be afraid to paint your gutters. Um, right. As long as they're painted properly, the paint will last as long on the gutters as they will on the house. And oh, so- unless you're removing the gutters anytime soon, but you are painting that area of the house, I do recommend that you paint all of that. Oh, okay. I'm all yeah. for it then. I, I just was, uh, I guess I was more emphasizing that they would not need to be removed. Yes. Okay. And we'll come around. Yeah, that's the thing is you want to walk away with a complete paint. Like sometimes people think, uh, well, I don't want to do my garage door because uh, it's new. We just had it installed, you know, a couple of years ago. It's got a fresh baked on finish from the manufacturer. Well, yeah. they just don't really understand that the a proper finish of premium grade Sherwin Williams paint or Kelly Moore paint. Um, that paint's going to last as long on your garage door as it does on the rest of your house. So it's really a non-issue. Yeah. Well, and you want everything to match. Yeah. You want a fresh coat of paint on everything. Yeah. And you want everything to match. You got it. Here, this is wood above the garage door. You mentioned the garage just in time. It looks good. It's not as deteriorated as the other. Yep. Uh, obviously it needs caulking and I don't see any rotten wood, but I did want to draw attention to the garage itself. Uh, there you well, see. all of like that area there, all of that area, it one, it takes eyes and it takes hands. It's hard to really say that you've painted a piece of wood or given it proper attention without actually looking at it with your eyes right. and touching it with your hands and then doing whatever needs to be done, which would be a combination of scraping, sanding. And when I say scraping, let me be clarify. I'm not talking about getting out of woods, uh, you know, a power sander and no, no. You just take a little five and one putty knife tool and scrape off all the loose paint. If you need to, or it can benefit by sanding it out. Most exterior woods don't benefit by sanding. So you can't really sand it, but uh, you can take like a cotton rag with a little water on it and smooth it out a little bit that way and work it over. Get ready right. for primer. That's the idea is that you're going to prime that and you need the prime the primer to absorb into the surface of that wood. And that's, that's what you're after. Yeah. I guess the, the main goal is to make sure that the paint sticks. Yeah. And in this case with a bad area like that, or right here on this siding, 
your your preparation your first step is getting it ready for the primer you need it clean so that the primer can actually seal yeah. cover absorb into uh, the difference between primer and paint eddy is that primer is designed from the manufacturer to absorb into the surface and seal it off that go. is not what paint is designed to do paint is designed to cover over a surface it's not designed to to absorb into paint is designed to cover and stick not absorb into primer is designed to absorb into it soaks into i guess the tiny pores in the wood absolutely it's designed from the manufacturer to do that that's why uh, one of the latest kind of uh, consumer scams or consumer sales pitches is the whole uh primer and paint in one. Oh yeah you've seen those oh i i use it <laughs> well and that's okay it, you almost can't escape it anymore it's become right. such a consumer uh ploy well, i don't know whatever you want to call it but yeah. um, it's okay usually that means that you used a good paint eddie so you used a good paint so it's okay it's not a bad bad thing well, it's just that it's not a primer you know it's just a good paint there's no way that you can have a paint be a primer that's impossible well i mostly just use it for like interior work and then mm -hmm. what i find is that whether or not it's primer and paint or not it still needs two coats well yeah that that's a that's a very good point uh i agree and so uh you're making my point with primer which is that i rarely prime walls that's another misnomer when people say oh i have red walls and i'm painting over them i need to paint on primer first and then paint no uh two coats of paint is what you need on that or three coats uh primer is not going to help you much in that environment because again you know there are like cover stain primers and that's different but either way yeah. hey let's get back to your exterior okay um what i would like you to do one more time for me uh -huh. we're looking at the um, east side of the home now uh this would be the east side yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what what is all that in front of it how close can i get to that wood uh, let me get between it and the house and show you I believe if you had to get a scaffold in here, you could. I think that I'd do. No, it's, it's just ladders, but it is working space. I don't mind telling you, it's Eddie, whether it's me or the next guy. Yeah. This is one of the things that we look for, and it does affect the cost of what any painter is going to charge to paint your house. And it's accessibility. You know, we just really need a good three or four foot workspace. And we're used to working around like air conditioners, so we can work around a three foot bush or three right. foot garden or those types. But when you get into, uh, I can't even get my hose for my spray rig. I can't even get my ladder set up there. Then it becomes an issue. Yeah. Now there's a, there's a little bit of overgrowth here that I could cut out in just a few minutes, but you, you've easily got more than three feet. I then mean, you're good. Yeah, yeah you're good. Maybe, maybe three and a half until you get into the main part of the trees. A lot of this overgrowth, I'll, I'll get this out of here. I'll make it as easy as I can on whoever. Well, uh, for what it's worth, don't feel like you have to, not for me or any other yeah. typical painter. As long as we have the space to work. And then yeah. the only other real issue when it comes to landscaping is uh, uh, trees that are overgrown onto the house. If yeah, like I right there where the trees in front of the house. Yeah. that has to be cut back and usually it's the painter that does it usually yeah. if i'm estimating a job like that i learned a long time ago i don't even talk to you about that i just say i'll cut those back and i go yeah. well i you know had to charge an extra hundred bucks and cut right. all that back well when you get here or whoever gets here this this will be cut back i mean i it needs to be done whether i get the house painted or not well hey eddie on that note i do have some painters that uh are subscribers and yes. so I'd like to say if anybody is interested in painting on the uh, east side of Dallas and wants to hop on here and talk to Eddie, you're welcome to do that because I am uh, thoroughly happy and satisfied just giving you this free estimate like this. And I'm not uh, saying I don't want your business. I'm saying that I uh, want to honor you by making sure that we keep an open uh 
you know, a relationship here. I'm not trying to corner you into your business or anything either. Oh, I, oh, I understand. Here's All right. Corner of well, the house. so you, you have a little bit of siding on the house. Um, on the back of the house, um, this is like, I can look at a house like this, Eddie, and see, you know, pretty much instantly the size and, you know, how much time it's going to take me under and how much pain it takes under typical circumstances. The things that I need to know from there and any other painter needs to know, A, is the rotted woods, if there's any rotted wood that has to be replaced. And then B is uh, if there's any added on, like on the back of the house, I see you're on the front now. Uh -huh. And all that's typical. Those are those are eaves and uh, gables. You're looking at two gables there. There's a front porch gable that covers the front porch. And there are metal uh, iron, wrought iron uh, posts there on the metal porch. Are those painted the trim color peach? They are. These are actually wood. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they're, they're they, they, they look thin in the in the picture on my phone. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I've learned the lesson. I knew I needed to have my television accessible, yeah. but next time I will definitely have a monitor where yeah, well, I can see this. They are they are thin. I'll give you that. Yeah. What is it? Just a four by four? What is that? Uh, yes, it's a four by four. It looks like it's been. Uh, What's at the bottom? Is it trimmed down at the bottom? Trimmed uh, down at the top? A little brick outcrop in here. Okay. It's all secure? Yes. All right. Easy okay. enough. Fact, I'm not actually in love with these. I, I, you know, I was thinking something a little more substantial. Uh, well, they're colonial style is what you call yeah. that. So they're, yeah. you know, that whole house is just a, you know, it's a grandma house. It's a, it's yeah. a cute little cottage that you have yeah. there, Eddie. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I say that respectfully. I mean, that's, you know, that's just, that's, uh, you know, I'm in uh, Arlington and so central Arlington has a lot of these houses and especially the further uh, west you get in central Arlington. So in the 76013 uh, zip code of Arlington, I paint a lot of these exact style homes. So that's what we're looking at is two gables there. If you ever wonder what a gable is, those that's two gables. The wood facing out is the fascia, and then the other large space is just the siding. Hey, Eddie, could I talk yeah. you into painting, since you have the boss lady right there, could I talk you into painting the house all one color? Uh, I think dark. we both. I dark. Think we, all one color, dark. I think we both kind of had it in our mind because the house has so much detail. Yep. Uh, that we would prefer uh, a two tone, uh, maybe uh, an off white uh, trim and then a, a, the grayish, some kind of grayish for the main body. I yeah. mean, whenever I first started doing this on my own, which was a, a fool's errand, um, mm. I was thinking about three different colors. So, but that's, you know, well, and you that know, what, either. what you're caught up in there is the desire to do something, uh, you know, nice with your home, which is yeah. understandable. Right. Right. But then also, you know, what the home actually um, can do, you know. And so your home is a country cottage. The more colors you put on it, the more country cottage it's going to look. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. So if you wanted to modernize your home, one way you would do it is like you said, put the, I sent you two samples of gray colors yesterday. We spoke about them. One's a mauve gray, one's a green gray. And if you put that medium to darker shade of gray on all of that siding, that siding is a large of enough surface alone, especially from the street uh, view, your curb, curb appeal, that, that that would be enough. But if you trim out all the trim in white, uh, that's the fascia. You, usually when we do the second color, Eddie, uh -huh. it's the whole eave. We, we usually just paint the siding the dark gray and everything else is, is white in this case. Uh, yeah, the trim and then underneath the eaves would all be the same color. Now, on a, on a more modern home with maybe a different colored brick, 
that wouldn't look as country cottage. It might look a little, you know, still contain a modern look. And I'm not trying to talk you out of your color selection. I just want to inform you from a uh, color decorator perspective that I believe you're right. That if you do a gray on the siding and trim it all out in white, it'll look much better than what it looks now. It'll look way more modern and probably be something that you really enjoy for years. Well, Galen is saying not white, but I don't really mean white. I mean a, a off -white. Well, um, off white. Well, off white is a, 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 what is subject. What is that? Uh, is a general. Um, I I really believe that at the end of the day, uh, you want a white. Um, you're probably going to look at some off whites. If you have something in mind that you already know about, then please stop me and interject. But I think that if you're going to okay. do something other than just a white for your trim, that you're going to have to go quite a bit darker on your uh, siding color. Because if you put a oh, off white on your trim, you need your siding color to be a shade darker also. Uh, well, I, I think I sent you a text with uh, Gala had uh, a color scenario that she found and mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a grayish for the main body what was what color was the trim again it wasn't necessarily white um, well the the main whites are acoustic white uh for sherwin williams yeah. sherwin williams has acoustic white yeah. wait that's kelly moore actually isn't it sherwin williams is pure white kelly moore is acoustic white sherwin williams is pure white and alabaster are their best whites Okay, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Let's see if this rings a bell with you. Uh, the main color she's got here is, uh, is that the ash? No. No. That doesn't tell you what's what. Hold on. Uh, let me look at your, what I sent you yesterday. Just give me a second. Yeah, she's looking at it now. You're okay, no. boss lady. I am so appreciative for you and your time. We're, uh, you know, I'm on your time. Oh, okay. So the trim says cameo. Oh, the, for the trim, she's got a color. It says cameo. Wait, is that the same one? I don't know if that's right or not. Cameo white. Oh, that's not it. Okay, I'm looking at it. I'm well, sure. this is where this uh, process will get much better, and I better get my uh, my my gear my you know get into gear here because someone can beat me out of the gates with a better studio. But if I yeah. uh, have the Streamyard. Um, a uh, paid service that I could pull the color up here online and even some videos that I have to show you videos of houses I've painted. So I've really got to do that. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, what I'm, is the name of the color and is it in a uh, gray family? It is both. In fact, they're both in the gray family. Mm -hmm. um, the main color is a color called silver. silver. That's so small. Silver what? Yeah. Silver. It, it's a. It's a. Silver dollar. Silver dollar. It's a medium gray. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with it. And ash is the. And then the for the trim, she's li liking a, a color called ash. And and it's 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 like a light gray. Or it, it kind of looks like a beige. And then there there's two choices for the accent color. One of them is like a an even darker yet gray, or a brown. In fact for like the shutters or the door. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's really what matters most. Like I don't ever um, try to persuade anyone out of colors. If you, unless I look at it and go, Oh no, that's not going to work. But, <laughs> but I do like your two colors. Yeah. We both like those colors and you know, we, we certainly don't discount. In fact, I, I like them both. Yeah. Uh, but we're still thinking about such that. a big decision. We don't have to decide that right now, but uh you know, we're getting more. To well, not only do you not have to decide it right now, I'm going to make recommendations. You know, this is a color that you're going to live with for the next, you know, 15 years, probably. I mean, you should. I can promise you that the way I'm going to describe to you and I'll provide with you, I'll, I'll text it over to you. It's okay. on my Facebook page currently, but I have a uh, list, you know, exterior, and they have a separate one for interior. It's all simplified okay. of the most important things for you to look out for. 
But anyway, okay. with a proper preparation and proper paint application, I know from experience by houses that I've painted, you know, over 15 years ago, that I can make your home look good for at least 10 or 12 years, no matter, you know, what the circumstances are. And what I mean by that is it's going to look really close to, um, uh, you know, 10 and 12 years from now. It's still going to look really close to like it did the day that we painted it or, you know, the month after. Because that's another thing about colors is that all colors take just a little bit of time to set up and they do it just just a hair over about a month's period, believe it or oh, not. Oh, okay. It's mostly the sheen is what it is. The sheen, there's no way to make a paint that uh, the sun doesn't affect the sheen to some extent. Sure. The way they've designed this paint from the manufacturer these days is to go ahead and uh, let the sun do its thing over the first 30 days. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's really not enough to be concerned with or anything. It's just another one of the things that I like to talk about. You know, it's one of the things that I'm aware of. All right. Well, I think your color selection is excellent um, without a need of um, wood replacement or anything like that. I can tell you that um, if I were painting this house all one color, and it were in my neck of the woods, meaning that it were in a five to 10, 15 mile radius of me, um, I would charge uh, probably anywhere from $2,600 to $2,800 for all one color. Mm -hmm. And for the second color, and I don't normally write it out this way, you know, but I'm telling you because that's the... Uh, that's the benefit of doing this without uh, an expectancy is I can speak transparently with you. So for the second color, I'm going to say that um, uh, there's just no way that you can get into a second color on an exterior like that for less than a couple of hundred dollars. And so I'm going to um, be as conservative as possible and say, I'm going to think along the lines of 300 for the second color. So um, I would be somewhere at about 2,900 to 3,100, somewhere like that on painting yeah. that house. I see. Okay. Have you taken any estimates or talked to anyone? Do you have any idea? Uh, I have not. Uh, the only thing that I was certain of is that it was too much of a task. I'm a do-it-yourselfer and I always have been, but this is just too much. It's well, it is too much. I mean, it's really a professional trade. Yeah. And so what does that mean, Eddie? It means that even after you get out there and sweat and kill yourself and throw things around and, you know, then even get excited after you've accomplished your painting, um, you know, you're going to have a subpar uh, job. You, you right. know, it's compared to what I do, I can assure you it's it's just no way you have to be a professional. You have to know the trade to do uh, the quality of work that that a professional painter does. There's no way around it. And it's just a misnomer. Uh, I tell you, uh, this is one of the things a lot of people when they call, you know, they don't know who you are. And so rightfully so, they're kind of trying to fill you out and everything. And so a lot of times they'll say, well, you can do this real quick. You yeah. can do this real quick. Well, I always respond immediately to that, which is, I don't know what your profession is, but in this profession, we don't really do anything just real quick, <laughs> you know. All right. So I'm uh, interested in two things. Um, one, would you like to know any more about pricing? Do you have any pricing questions? Um, let me turn this. I'm working on switching the camera around, back around. Well, then I'll chat for just a second. Okay. Um, you know, here's the thing is that uh, Sherwin Williams just last week increased their prices 30 oh. percent. It was a mandatory increase for every contractor. It's a big deal. And that's the second time this year. So it's 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 really affected it. Just like when you go to the grocery or go to the dollar store, everything's a dollar twenty five. Yeah. So that pricing does reflect 
uh, increased rates of paint, all the materials we use, gas, and, you know, everything. So what I'm getting at, Eddie, is that that same house, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's it, because the economy has been bad since 2009. So prices have kind of been all over the place. House painting prices have kind of been all over the place since 2010. But I, I feel pretty safe to say that I personally, five, six years ago, uh, would paint that house for uh, twenty two to twenty four hundred dollars somewhere in there. Yeah. So over just the last year, really, um, prices, uh, there's nothing I or anyone else can do about it. Yeah. Well, you know, and on the same side of that coin, money's just not worth what it used to be. Thank you, sir. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Hey, we'll, we'll get through this together. You know, if it's get throughable, you know, we'll get through it together. There's always a way to turn, uh, you know, a coal into diamonds. It's just a matter of being the person to do it. Yeah. I, I used to work in a building. I told somebody that I was going to take that building and make it the irritating grain of sand that I turned into a pearl. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's if, yeah, that's it. That's life. Yeah. We just we just philosophized for everyone. I mean, that, was, that was the best advice anyone will ever get right there, Eddie. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, so that's where we're at. And uh, brother, thank you so much for your time. I'd be sure. happy to paint your house. There's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about before we go, if you have a minute. But uh, okay. summing ahead. up just your business, uh, I'd love to have your business. I'd be happy to paint that house. Um, I, I don't mind reiterating again here live. I haven't said this. I told you yesterday, uh, it would take me about, uh, three days with, with one person's help, which I do have help. Uh, so we're looking at two cars for three days and, uh, you know, really that the drive time from where we're at and the, uh, the gas and, uh, you know, the other things that, you know, just no one's ever going to tell you about. So now's just as good a time as any to tell you, you know, I'm going to end up eating over there. I'm probably going to eat lunch and dinner in, in your neck of the woods, you know, right. whereas if I'm closer to my house, I'm coming home for lunch, you know, so there's yeah. a lot of added expenses when you start driving, you know, to the other side of Dallas or the other side of Fort Worth. So, um, I, I would need to add, uh, personally about, um, I'm man, I'm going to go easy. Really. I'm going to say $300 just for our travel time for two vehicles. Yeah. And so, um, if I estimated your job the way that I really truly wanted to, I would say that's a $3,500 job for me. Yeah. But since you've been kind enough to give me your time here and if you're willing to work with me, that's the other thing I'm noticing here is you're not in a big hurry to get it painted tomorrow so I can schedule you out in the next you know, few weeks or any time after that. Yeah, yeah I'm, there, there's no no fire here. Yeah. So that sense of uh, a lack of urgency helps me uh, also. So. Um, I, I'd, uh, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, is knock off the equivalent either way. And, uh, I'd be happy to do it for, for, uh, 29. I do the whole thing for 29. And I think that you should expect someone there locally, someone who's closer to you to, to do it for that price maximum. Yeah, really? Okay. Uh, but that is, uh, if I were hiring, do you mind if I talk to you about uh, hiring a professional painter? Uh, of course not. I'd love to hear it. Do you have any other questions before I do? Uh, I just, I got something itching in the back of my mind that you mentioned about uh, the color scheme and, you know, making it a more modern look. At least for the moment, I think we're kind of married to the two-tone scheme. I'm not, I'm but not. I'm not completely, I mean, I'm, I've been thinking about the one color, so I'm not against that completely. Well, she's not completely against it, and neither am I. But what, what I guess I want to reiterate, in your mind's eye, the single color scheme, while it's cheaper and it's also easier, you, you feel like it is more of a, a more modern appeal? Is, is that 
is that what's behind the scenes? It, I would say it's definitely, I'm speaking to you uh, without bias. It's definitely a more modern appeal. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, a lot of that has to do with the uh, design of the home, though. The home is designed to be a little country cottage. Right. And so the more colors you put on it, the more country it's going to look. So we're, we're and, trying to pull a So therefore, a solid color does modernize it the most. Now, I'd like to say that that doesn't mean that that just because that is a truth doesn't mean it's what's best for you. You're the one that gets to enjoy the colors on your home. So you should do what you feel like you're going to enjoy. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be right or wrong. We just mm -mm. have to love it. <laughs> That's correct. Now, you know, if you told me you wanted to put pink on the house, I would tell you that that could be wrong. You know, if you tell me you want to try turquoise blue, you know, I could tell you that might be wrong. If but I was, when it comes if, to trimming the house out in yeah. white along with a nice gray siding, that sounds beautiful to me. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll narrow that down as, as, as we go forward. I would tell you this, that um, one of the things that I look for and I think you should look for when you're painting your home is what your neighbors have. If uh, you were thinking about painting your brick, for example, and the neighbors on both sides already have painted brick, it's not going to increase the value of your home as much. If no one else near you uh, has painted brick and you painted your brick, then you're going to get much more value out of painted brick if yours is the only one nearby that's painted. Please. Uh, in our instance, we have on one side it's painted, and on the other, the other, the other neighbor is unpainted. And yeah, I saw that I, on street view. My, my reluctance to painting the brick, I don't doubt it would look great and maybe even appropriate, is that I'm just not ready to make that decision. I feel like that's something you can't undo. Uh, well, where that applies to you, Eddie, what I'm I was using as an example for selecting colors. Uh -huh. If your next door neighbor has gray with white trim, you might, that might be another reason to not use white trim. Uh -huh. If your neighbor has all gray with no white trim, then that might be a reason to go ahead and do white trim. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, mm -hmm. you, Thank you. You don't want to copycat anybody it's not a matter of just copycatting you want your house to stand alone you want it to stand out and have some curb appeal and the more that it looks like the house next door the more it blends in and doesn't stand out and have curb appeal right you want i want them to see my house not my neighbors that's correct and yeah. especially if you're selling the home when you're selling the home curb appeal is you know a number one yeah that's that's not something that we're interested in right now like i say uh Without getting into a lot, this, this was my mother's house. Her and I went in on it, and I cared for her in this house for 11 years. And mm -hmm. To be almost 100 years old, and and in her passing, my wife and I have, have moved over here and uh, completely remodeling the interior. And that's part of the reason the exterior has gotten such critical shape is because you know so many other things to do. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing, man. Uh, wishing your thoughts of your mother well, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, I can't thank you enough for spending your time with me, and especially Boss Lady. I mean, really, I'm, I am just kind of beside myself, and I've got Dan McNew here watching, and uh, who all knows who's watching. Okay, um, uh, I'd like to talk to you about hiring painters. Okay. And it's for you, but it's also for anyone else watching. I think this is very valuable information I'm about to share with you. And it's just as good a time as any to remind everybody that I do have a service where for $10, I can put all of this valuable information into 10 minutes. And I have had over the last two years, about 20 people have uh, been, uh, have saved money, time, and headache by paying me $10 for 10 minutes of this advice. But I'm happy to share it for free, not only because I feel bad when someone like you calls Eddie and I just really can't get out there and estimate your job. Right. And it's not yours. Like I have actual customers, people that I've worked with for years and they'll call and they want me to go estimate a job in Waxahachie, you know? I'm like, I just can't go estimate a job in Waxahachie or Weatherford. I just cannot do it. The economy will not allow me to do it. 
And I think the only painters that can, honestly, are some of the bigger, um, like incorporated, uh, franchised names. Well, that, and like you said, uh, you have to, or anyone else that's going to bid a job like that, actually any trade, you have to incorporate that into your price and the customer would have to pay for that. Yeah. And so on that note, I'm a firm believer that doing business locally is good for everybody. You can't always do business locally because, you know, Yokohama tires, rubber is made in South America and, you know, wherever. But when it comes to a home service, you can always find people close by that do provide professional home service. It's just a matter of how do you find local professionals? Because uh, like you can't even hardly do it online anymore. You know, you go type for a painter or someone on Google and it's 50 million things come up. So you have to be a little creative. And that's part of recognizing that. That's part of what I'm doing here. I started doing these videos, Eddie, about 10 years ago. The day that I saw I could upload, a, make the video on my phone and upload it from my phone to YouTube, I made a video that day. You know, and I've been making them every since. So the majority of the videos on my Christian Painters YouTube channel are uh, me just talking live. But I always try to uh, set up my paints and, uh, you know, my my brush or my painter that I'm working with so that I have something to show you. So I think most of those videos are actually entertaining and informative, even though they're just live. They're not edited. Yeah, that was actually how I, how I found you through your YouTube channel. I was searching for color combinations for a salmon brick house, and there's almost nothing out there, and you happen to be painting one. Yeah, well, I recognizing that years ago, I was like, okay, great opportunity to make uh, videos to compare paint and brick. But I, on that note, you know, I have uh, over 1,800 videos on this channel, and um I have uh, multiple videos for pretty much every brick color. So no matter what your brick color is, I have videos for it. But pink brick by far is my number one, uh, uh, you know, video views because everybody is interested or, or everybody is challenged by the pink brick. Well, and the information is very scarce uh, with regard to pink brick. I mean, there's almost nothing out there either I, that I could find. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Here's what I recommend is what's nearest to you, Eddie, a Kelly Moore or a Sherwin Williams? I think a Sherman Williams. I believe that there's one uh, over on Northwest Highway. Okay, then that's what I recommend. I recommend that you go down to Sherwin Williams. If you walk into an average paint store, you'll see that there will be a board on the wall with anywhere from 20 to maybe 50 cards from different house painters. You know what I'm talking about? I do. I, I can imagine it. And the, the challenge there is obvious. You know, who are all these people? Well, most people think you can narrow that down pretty quick just by asking the associate there, hey, do you, can you recommend one of these guys? Well, the, you know, legally, that's the best way to put it. They're not supposed to. And I guess as a sales associate, according to Sherwin Williams um, um, rules, they're not supposed to recommend a painter. But uh, and so they don't. A lot of times they just will hand you a few cards and maybe in that card is the painter that is best for you. But maybe not because Sherwin Williams has a need to spread the business around. If you own a paint store, do you want to sell paint to one or two paint companies that do a whole lot of paint locally? Or do you want to sell paint to 100 or 200 or 300 paint contractors? It makes sense. We know the answer. So it behooves them to spread the business around. So knowing that going in, the way you get over that is real simple. You could, you could spend the time yourself. You could go there several mornings at eight o'clock and see the same painters and kind of get an idea who's actually painting there. But what I recommend that you do is find one of the associates or preferably the manager, someone who's been there for, uh, you know, a year, someone who's been there for a little while. Sherwin Williams has a lot of high turnover, but they also have people that stay there for a while. So you just need to find one of the associates that have been at the store for a year or so and ask them, 
who comes in to buy paint every day? That's your question. Who's here every day? Who, what painter is here every day buying paint? You see the difference? Yeah. You want to know which painter is there? Because like if you go over here to uh, Sherwin Williams in Mansfield or Sherwin Williams in South Arlington or Kelly Moore, you know, I'm there. You know, I'm there quite often buying paint. And those are my stores because I do the majority of my painting right here in Mansfield in South Arlington, Central Arlington and south of here out to like Rendon and those areas. And so in your case, you're going to have a couple of painters and it's not going to be 50. You're just going to be a couple of painters that actually buy paint at that store, you know, pretty much every day. And that's your painter. You just got to find that guy. Hmm. Yeah. Now, yes. what I would uh, recommend that you do from there, not just you, Eddie, but anyone else is, uh, you know, tell that person, hey, it's it's 2022. Do you have a YouTube channel with some videos that I can check out? You know, they might not just because they don't have videos on a YouTube channel or an active Facebook page doesn't mean they're not a professional painter. But uh, they might actually appreciate it if you said, well, would you mind making a video of your job today and putting it up on your Facebook page so I can see where you're working today? See, the power's in your hands. You just have to know right. how to how to ask. Right. How to present it, I guess, is you're not asking. Uh, you're you're going to pay someone some money. We are happy to provide a service to you. And part of that service is gaining your confidence, you know, before you hire us and give us money. Yeah, that's so. Crazy. Yeah. So that's why I do the YouTube videos. Number one is so that people can contact me, my customers, so that my customers can find me uh, conveniently. Yeah. But number two is uh, so that I can gain your confidence, you know. And so that's what I would do is I would find the painter by going to my local paint store and finding out who buys paint there every day. Then I would contact that person and ask them instead of references, you know, just, Hey, can you make me a video of your job? I'd, I'd like to see what you're doing today. Yeah. When this day and age, you would think that they would be on board. I mean, I think they would, if they didn't say thank you very much for encouraging me and being willing to watch my video, I, I would, that would be kind of a red flag. But like I said, it doesn't mean they're not a professional painter, uh, a professional painter. Your number one concern is that they're focused on doing the jobs right. And so if that's what they're doing, you know, that's your number one. Right. Me, I've just always had this uh, desire to share the things that I enjoy. Uh, or it's just part of my nature. And so this is really easy for me. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, my personal experience, I found it helpful. Thank you very much, Eddie. Well, um, I really don't think that you should expect to find a painter to do it for a whole lot less than the numbers that I quoted. Okay. I'll be happy to write that up and send it over to you, by the way. But uh, I don't think you're going to expect to find a painter for less. Like I said, five years ago, yeah, definitely. But today, and especially today, with Sherwin-Williams price increases just last week, again, uh, you know, and it's not just Sherwin-Williams, you know, every, you know, everything's going up still little by little. So oh. I, I think that that number for a two-tone on that house is, uh, is, is pretty much what you should expect. Yeah. Now, having said that, I always like to say this, that the paint companies that are out there, and I'm not going to mention them by name, if you asked me or anyone asked in the comments or anything, I'd be happy to answer. But, um, uh, oh, I forget what I was saying. I lost my train of thought, Eddie. Well, that happens. <laughs> I was saying something about the paints. Uh, well, you were you were explaining the the process of hiring a painter was where you were, and you were you were talking about uh, you know trying to find the best painter, and and, uh, and then you got to the prices. And yeah, well, that's it. Uh, oh, oh, I know what I was getting at is that the uh, the the paint companies that are uh, incorporated and franchised. 
uh, I know who they are. I have a very good idea of what they charge as well. And uh, they're all going to be higher than that. I can promise you that. And that's what I was saying is I don't want to mention their names. You may have heard some paint companies that have commercials on the radios, oh, yeah. things like that. Most of those paint companies, and I'm not knocking them. I'm not saying that you can't. I, what I'm saying is that if you choose to hire one of those companies, they are going to charge more. But if you go by my checklist, which I'll send that over to you okay. um, and protect yourself, that's what's key. Just know what to expect. Let the person that you're hiring know what you're expecting. Uh, my advice is just hand them a list. Say, this is what I'm thinking. Is this what your contract says? You're going to power wash. You're going to scrape all the loose paint. You're going to prime it with what wood primer. You're going to use two coats on all the rough areas. Hey, I you mind if I talk to you about two coats real quick? Sure. Because two coats is a, is a misnomer. And it's, and it's also something that some of the bigger paint companies, uh, the way they present their uh, services is they say, hey, for one price, we can do your exterior for this amount. But we have our platinum package here and we can do your exterior for this amount. And to the average person, that makes a lot of sense because they're like, oh, OK, it's kind of like going to the car wash or something, you know. But your exterior paint needs are not like going to a car wash. Your exterior paint needs are what they are 100% of the time. So what that means is, is that um, they uh, have a way of selling you on a second coat of paint for your whole house. And your whole house just does not need a second coat of paint. As long as you're doing the preparations properly, using good primers and priming properly, the only areas on your house that really need a second coat of paint are the rough areas. The bad areas are the areas that need it. So what that means is, is like underneath your soffit that's protected from the sun and, you know, the elements that that brick mold underneath there, that that stuff will not benefit from a second coat of paint. What's going to benefit from a second coat of paint is obvious. It's the areas of wood that uh, are exposed. So it's your siding, it's your trim woods, it's your fascia. And buddy, you better be putting two coats of paint on that stuff. Cause if you're not, you're not doing the job properly. Yeah, it either needs it or it don't. That's correct. And so a lot of people, it's a misnomer in the industry is what I'm saying, Eddie. As a lot of people, like I give you example, some of the older uh, customers that call, they're like, well, do you spray that or do you brush? You know, because I, I I always brush my houses, you know, and you're like, partner, you know, I don't know how to answer, but just to answer, you know, yeah, we spray, brush, roll, we do all of it, you know. And so that means that those second coats are usually brushed and rolled in. You know, we spray the first coat, we spray the whole house. But the rough areas, I'm either, if you watch my videos, most of the time I will prime all those rough areas and then I'll roll out the paint on the rough areas before I spray it. But either way, the rough areas are getting two and three coats and uh, the second and third coats are either brushed or rolled. Right. Yeah, and the only time that I'm going to double coat a soffit or something like that is uh, if there's a problem area. Usually it's squirrels. Squirrels get up there and eat the wood, you know. And uh, do you want to pay me $100 to replace a little piece of trim wood that a squirrel chewed on? Or do we just want to clean it up, prime it, and paint it twice and go on about our business? And then let the squirrel come back and chew it again. Well, maybe uh, the idea is that if you prime it and put two coats of paint on it, he might not enjoy it. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the raw wood seems to be very appetizing. He, he might get back to it, but, it, you know, odds are, you know, that it'll take him a while. Yeah. I They'll probably you. move. They're, they usually move on. That's what I'm saying. That's been my experience. That's another misnomer. People who have problems with animals and things, squirrels mm -hmm. in particular. Uh, you know, they, they want to put screens up, you know, and put metal over that space where the squirrel was chewing. Well, squirrel will just find another spot. You know, the idea is if you, again, put proper primer on it, two coats of paint, odds are that squirrel is not going to be up there chewing in that spot.
I've seen it happen many times where they pretty much go away. If anybody else has other experiences, they're welcome to hop on here in the comments and let us know. But yeah, uh, our industry is full of misnomers. It's one of the most misunderstood industries, Eddie. I get a lot of people that say, well, I know how to paint. You know, I put myself through college painting houses. I just... I just don't want to paint uh, this house. I thought I'd give you a shot at it. You know, if you're interested, <laughs> you're like, dude, you're not going to paint your house. You know? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, thank you very much for respecting me, Eddie, as a uh, professional house painter. I'm honored, sir. Like your time is very important to me and I just really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. It's been, uh, it's been fun and very informative and, uh, I look forward to, uh, to whatever happens next. Well, I will definitely write up an estimate and send it over to you. And uh, if you hire me, we'll make some videos. That's for sure. Oh, well, that'd be neat. Sure. Yeah. And I'd be happy to have your business. I, I'd be more than happy. I'd be honored. Like I said, it's, it's something that I don't have to rush to get to because like next week I have work. Uh, I, I don't mind telling you, I'm working with Tim Platt, Tim Platt and all that is beautiful. So all of my, People over in North Fort Worth, especially, uh, contact all that's beautiful painting. Uh, he's a friend of mine that I've known for a long time. And sometimes uh, uh, I'll pick up a little work with him. And this is one of those times. So I'm going to be working with Tim Platt next week. Okay. And then I'll talk to you throughout the week next week. And we'll try to get it set up. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you have my email. I, I guess, would you... Uh, send the quote through email or yeah or text i can okay. i usually okay. just text it over oh, okay yeah i write it up i have an actual uh printed estimate form okay so i write it up on that and take a picture and send it to okay. you <laughs> yeah. and then when i come over i hand it to you so you have a, a hard copy okay all right yeah. okay and that's pretty much how it works um i do charge 50 percent down but i don't charge the other 50 percent until the job is completed Okay. I, I don't recommend it went because I can't. If you're hiring another painter, I don't recommend that you pay them 50% down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, I recommend that you pay them a down payment, you know, but you should negotiate it down to, you know, the what what you're thinking the material expenses are going to be. Right. What you think the uh, first day of labor or first two days maybe of labor are going to be. So in this case, for example, I'm just throwing out a number without thinking about it. But let's say the paints were uh, uh, the materials were about five hundred dollars and uh, labor is uh, I pay my guy three hundred dollars a day, Eddie, my help. But, you know, my help is the best in the business. But uh, still, you know, that's close to going rates, no matter any good professional painter that you're going to hire to work with is, you know, 200 minimum, but up to $300 a day, easy. And so anyway, uh, my point is, is that, you know, if you can negotiate your down payment down to something like 20% or 25% or even 30%, uh, what you're doing is you're, you're keeping the marbles in your court. It's not a way of being mean or stringing anyone along or anything like that, because I don't recommend that. I don't think you should be up in your uh, uh, up in people's business. I think you as a consumer and I'm speaking about myself here now as a consumer, I should educate myself enough so that once I hire someone, I am comfortable enough to trust them to do the job that I've hired them to do. That's part of the service of hiring someone. So you don't have to worry about it, right? Well, yeah. And you, you want to protect yourself too, because the, you got it. And yes. so the only protection you have, and it's the only protection is the money. You know, it's a money transaction. It's a service for money. And so you have to provide that service before you get the money. And that's the name of the game. Yeah, In my case, I charge 50% down. There's, I'm not going to negotiate it, but, um, one of the uh, biggest mistakes that I had ever made, and I learned it early, was that don't brag on somebody until they're finished. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not too much. I, I think it's just yeah. important that you educate yourself and make sure that you, uh, you know that you can trust the person or the business that you've hired. 
And again, I believe that's part of paying someone $3,000 is so you don't yeah. have to worry about the thing, you know, let them do their job. While you're there uh, for the benefit of me and everybody else, you, you're accepted uh, payment method. You do cash check or, or. Yeah. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah. Uh, 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 like I have Venmo PayPal, so I can do, oh. uh, you know, do it that way, but I can take a check to whatever. Yeah. It's all good. Okay. Uh, and, uh, let's see what I was going to say is, um, uh, 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 you know, I encourage you, Eddie, since we started this process this way, only if you have time and it shows you kind of my transparency also that, you know, I'm confident in what I'm saying and I'm confident in my services. Um, if you have a minute respectfully, I wouldn't ever encourage anyone to call 10 painters and get 10 estimates. But you might just call, um, you know, you might just test what I said. Go down to Sherwin Williams and find you someone. Call them and see what kind of experience you have. See what they have to say. Maybe you could do the same thing. Maybe you could just send them some pictures and a video and say, hey, can you give me an idea of what you would charge me for that or something? But yeah. uh, I do encourage you only if you have time and you want to, you know, yeah. to check with one of the bigger paint companies that, uh, you know, are the corporate franchise guys. And then also check with one of the smaller guys. And I don't mind telling you what I mean by smaller guys. I mean, uh, Rodriguez painting or Martinez painting, because right. that's a inevitable part of this industry. You're not going to, uh, you know, half of the painters or more, you know, are Martinez, Rodriguez, uh, you know, Escobar. And I say that respectfully. Um, that is not meant to be negative in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd, I'd be all about, you know, supporting small business. And I, I, I believe in helping them. And, you know, they don't typically have the overhead some of these big outfits do. Well, I think more than anything is like with me, I can, there's not a neighborhood in Arlington or Mansfield that I don't have houses in that I've painted exteriors. So when I drive through, you know, if you're with me, it's almost torture because I'm like, yeah, I painted that house. I painted that house. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? I painted it, you know. So I, I think that has, it's the heart, Eddie, that you're after when it comes to using someone locally. Uh, I don't really enjoy going to Walmart and seeing all of my customers, but, you know, I can't go to Walmart in Mansfield without running into at least one of my customers. Well, that's you know? not a bad problem to have. Well, I think it's a... Overall, it's a cool thing. That's my point is that when you're hiring locally, you're hiring someone who, uh, you know, more than likely cares, you know, because they're close to home. They care if you're if you're fighting traffic and, you know, barely making it on time to get to the other side of town to paint a house. You're tired before you get there to start the job. It's not it's not uh, all bad. It's just it's kind of human nature. Yeah, it increases the difficulty. Well, I use the example, I can come home for lunch. Right. You know, that's a big deal. I can make some phone calls, you know, all of that. If I'm up in Plano, there's no way. Not only can I not come home for lunch. And uh, East Dallas is a little different because we can hop on 20 and 635 is not too bad. Yeah. But if you're in Plano, you know, this is what I learned a long time ago. When I started this business, Eddie, I started in June of 1999. And out of the gates, I had friends that referred me and I was doing a lot of work in Plano and uh, North Dallas and Carrollton up there. But I'm from Arlington and I was noticing, you know, as I'm fighting traffic to get home every day, the same painters were fighting traffic to go north as I was going south. And I just kind of had an epiphany and was like, this is ridiculous. There's no need for me to be driving up here. So anyway, my point is, is that uh, if I'm in Plano at five o'clock, forget it. There's no sense in trying to come home. I'm going to eat dinner in Plano, too. You know, I'm going to come home at seven. And if I leave at 530 or leave at seven, I'm still going to get home at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Unless I have a toll tag. I guess you can toll tag it. And, yeah, I guess that's changed the, the 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 diagram a little bit. Hey, do you ever listen to Ed Wills Wallace? I don't. I just thought I'd throw him out there since you might. Do you know who he is? 
Uh, I believe he's a radio personality. That yeah, that's right. He's on 570 KLIF still today, every Saturday. And he's also on Channel 8, uh, ABC, and uh, uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram or whatever the paper is. Yeah, Star-Telegram. Star uh, probably. But uh, he's been opposed to the toll roads from day one. And he's like the most vocal, uh, most public person uh, about the toll roads. Yeah, I don't care for him myself. Well, I, I think they're nice. It's nice to have highways, but to force people onto them and to charge double charge because we've already paid for those roads. Right. Now we have to pay for the roads we paid for. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I'm, I, you know, I'm not into politics and this certainly this conversation wasn't intended to go a political manner. I just like to throw out uh, that since we were talking about driving, you know. Well, hey, Eddie, do you have any questions about your house? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, if I think of something, I can contact you. Uh, okay, boss lady, have any questions? Uh, I, well, she's gone inside. I think she's good. Uh, her role is going to be more in helping us pick the colors, mm -hmm. the color, whichever way we decide to go with this. And uh, once that's done, it's uh, it's off to the races, I think. Well, go get your paint chips. That's what you're going to start with is get the paint chips and look look at them with the brick. And, and I will look at your message and check those colors and get back with you on it and look at the paint chips myself. Okay. But from there, you know, it's a, it's a home that you're going to live with for the next, you know, 15, 20 years, really. Uh, I mean, a color. So I, I think it's important to look at the actual paint if you possibly can. Uh, people paint their houses all the time without looking at the paint. So I'm not right. saying it's a requirement, right. but um, my recommendation is to go get a gallon of the paint. Okay. And don't go get a sample color because the sample color is not the same paint. Okay. Um, you can tell them that you're working with Christian painters. Anybody can tell them they're working with Christian painters and get my prices. Okay. But, um, get you a gallon of the paint and don't paint it just in one little spot. You have to paint like the whole piece of wood beside the garage door. I see. You know, you have to paint a whole lot, like on your back, maybe a whole piece of siding because uh, you need to see the color with the brick without the old color throwing it off. So that means you have to paint like a good two foot space or something. Okay. Is your preference a Sherman Williams color or? I mean, Kelly Moore, Sherman Williams and Kelly Moore. They're, they're basically pretty par uh, product wise. Okay. But All they're right. the only ones for the record. I don't mean to ditz. Uh, I, I see, I see, uh, I see eye paints. What is it? Paint. So uh, Pittsburgh paints. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they just don't have the products. Pittsburgh is a, is a, is a weird company in the sense that uh, I can't remember all the, uh, it, they're a big glass company like that company. Oh, yeah. yeah. That company is a huge company and they're a big commercial glass company. So they have a lot of really cheap commercial grade uh, industrial products and things like that. And they just don't have good, um, home service materials there at Pittsburgh paints. I wish they did. They just don't. So Kelly Moore and Sherwin Williams. Okay. And uh, I don't really recommend anything at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. Uh, Bear paints are good products. So if you're going to have to go to Home Depot, try to stick with a Bear product and you're pretty safe. Yeah. Okay. But I, I use Sherwin Williams or Kelly Moore, and I think that's very key. Anybody okay. listening, if you're hiring a professional painter, if they're not already using premium grade Sherwin Williams paints or premium grade Kelly Moore paints, and they can't explain that to you in one sentence, that's a major red flag. You probably don't want to hire that person. Yeah, certainly I can find a suitable color in one of those brands that would be well, Sherman Williams is down the road. So that's the name of that game. Unfortunately, I, I like Kelly Moore. Uh, Kelly Moore's like business model is different than most any uh, business in America. So I like Kelly Moore. Uh, Kelly Moore's manufacturing plant. They have a huge manufacturing plant down the road from you. But um, they don't have stores. You know, they just finally opened a store in Mansfield. Uh, I guess it's been about three years ago now. But uh, 
that's the name of the game is convenience. And Sherwin Williams is like a Southern Baptist church. They have a, a paint store on a corner in every town now. So yeah, okay. there's nothing wrong with using Sherwin Williams paints. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I definitely recommend. I use Sherwin Williams exterior super paint for the record. Okay. I don't think you need to use Emerald or any of those paints. I believe those are like consumer packaged, consumer market driven products. And uh, one of the misnomers in the paint industry, Eddie, is that painters use a cheaper grade of paint, like a lower quality, like almost watered down is what people think type of a paint so that we can save money. And it's just not true. A professional painter wants the best product available because we're not only trying to give the customer the best uh, product, but it saves us time. We're trying to work efficiently. So the best products are what are easier to work with and save us more time. I hear you. Yeah. And that, and you don't want, uh, you don't want anybody speaking ill of uh, your paint. Oh, no way. No, I, it would drive me crazy. That's right. one thing. Like I haven't been able to please everybody. Uh, let's say that straight up. I definitely have a couple of haters. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I've also had, you know, customers, you know, rip me off. I mean, just thousands, you know, yeah. thousands of dollars. So I don't even want to go into that. So there's, there's goods and bads and all kinds of sides to everything sure. in uh, this whole situation. Yeah. But for sure. Um, I am, very proud to say that uh, really it's it's challenging to find a neighborhood in Rendon, Mansfield, Arlington, and many other cities really where I where I haven't painted in that neighborhood and usually multiple homes. I put it like this, Eddie. I've been in business over 23 years painting houses and businesses. So business wise would be like I painted every AMF bowling lane in Texas and Oklahoma back in the day. Oh, wow. uh, but that wasn't ever my intention. I'm a service provider, so I really like doing homes. Uh, I don't like doing commercial work at all. Yeah, they they just made me do it. Uh, AMF Bowling Lanes paid me. They just said, "Look, you just have to tell us how much it costs." It's like, okay, I'll do <laughs> yeah. it. But that was before the economy went bad too. I bet you AMF. I'm pretty sure most AMF Bowling Lanes are closed down, aren't they? I think they are. There used to be one near us. I believe it's closed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you have any questions for me, Eddie? I'm starting uh, to ramble on here. I'm enjoying it. Rick, company, I, I sir. think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay. Well, if you think of anything else, holler. And like I said, I'll be in touch. All right. And I cannot thank you enough. Before I let you go, I want to say thank you to Dan also, Dan McNew of Just the Facts, man. Uh, he's got an excellent YouTube channel. If you uh, are looking for some entertainment, go over there and watch his video on the Columbia. That alone is, I, I, I think I've seen it before, but I can't remember. So I'm really excited about watching it again. He brought he it up to me yesterday. Captured it live? What? Oh yeah, he captured it in real time. Yeah, Apparently cool. he grew up a little bit of a tech geek and science geek. Uh, my guess is he, he has good parents, you know, and uh, a lot of those things were facilitated, which is awesome. And I'm really excited. He says he has footage of it in real time wow. and that um, NASA had that footage within 24 hours. So he turned it over to NASA. It's so relevant. And that when you see NASA talking about it and in the news reports, uh, sometimes it was his video footage. Oh, wow. So they actually used it. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. It's it's huge. It's really neat. I mean, uh, Dan's a unique guy. Uh, are you familiar with Pantera? Pan the band? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dan McNew is the founder of Ride for Dime. Okay. Uh, Ride for Dime was a charity uh, group that uh, had a motorcycle ride and uh, did concerts for a few years. Uh, they raised funds for a, uh, a children's musical group called uh, Little Kids Rock, where they were able to provide acoustic guitars to children at inner city schools with the funds that they raised. But just as important or more so is that they memorialized uh, Daryl Abbott. And that's what the Ride for Dime was all about. So he's a very 
extremely interesting guy and uh, I've known him for a lot of years and always wanted to get to know him better. So uh, I started, you know, this stream yard, Eddie, uh, this is it. The, the reason we're doing this more than anything else is because right now today, YouTube is the algorithms are really hot on StreamYard. So as we've been speaking, the YouTube algorithms have been pushing this video to the front and they'll continue pushing this video to the front more so than they are the other average videos because the algorithms are set to push these live streams. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Well, I, yeah, I don't know what the, all the driving motivation is behind it, but it's pretty obvious that, uh, some people right now are watching this on their televisions. They're not watching on their phone or their computer. Hmm, cool. You know, you can watch this on your television. Uh, I did not. I mean, I uh, guess can you pull up YouTube on your TV? Uh, yes, uh, we have a smart TV with it's got a YouTube app and the grandkids are watching all the time. Yeah, that's it. You just go on. I, I have Roku. I, I'm not a techie. All I can tell you is I'm fortunate. I have a, 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 I have help. So I have Roku and it has YouTube. And so I just turn YouTube on my TV. And so people will watch this video on their television because that's where YouTube is really pushing these algorithms. YouTube and Google and StreamYard, they're all smart enough to know that they want their their materials being played on your television. Right. Oh, so yeah. When you turn on YouTube on your TV, that's where they really push this particular uh, stream yard uh, live streaming uh, to the front of the algorithms and get it on the television. Oh, yeah. It's content. You got it. Yeah. And they need it. They're content service providers. And that's what we're doing. We're providing content. So. On that note, uh, thank you very much. This is uh, kind of historic for me, Eddie. You know that, right? Yeah, you mentioned that going in. That's that's great, Rick. I'm glad to be a part of it. Glad to be able to help. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll be in touch. Okay. Everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. If anybody wants a free estimate, this is how we do it. Welcome to the future. That said, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.